Hello viewers. Once again, I'm PS Strategy with you with my step-by-step -step design and analysis of steel truss by Graphico Analytical Method or GAM Part 5. In this section, I'm going to discuss how we can select the suitable section for a truss by the help of Excel spreadsheet. Before start of the demonstration of part 5, I am requesting you for like, share, subscribe and comments. Before start of the main lecture, we should recapitulate some definition. Definition of moment of inertia. This is a plane area divided into 5 parts. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. And this is our axis xx. R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 are the distance of CG from this axis. Then Ixx is equal to this expression. Any section has two axes xx, yy. This is a rectangular hollow section considered. Ixx is equal to A into Rxx square. Rxx is equal to Ixx by A. Similarly, Iyy is equal to A into Ryyx square. Ryy is equal to root square root of Iyy by A. Here, Rs and Ryy are the radius of gyration about x-axis and y-axis. Similarly, i-x-x and i-y-y is the moment of inertia about i-x-x and i-y-y respectively. Here A is constant. A means cross-sectional area of this section. This is our result obtained from graphical analytical method. This is dead load column. This is live load column. This is wind load column and this is member number. This is combination of service load. This is dead load plus live load. This is dead load, live load, wind load and this is dead load and wind load. As per IS 800-2007 the maximum value of effective slenderness ratio. Effective slenderness ratio means length, actual length of the member into K, where K is a coefficient of reduction of the, the actual original length. And R is radius of gyration. The member carrying compression, compressive load resulting from dead load and imposed load the maximum effective slenderness ratio will be 180. A tension member in, in which a reversal of direction stress occurred due to load other than wind or seismic forces, it is also 180. In case of truss, no member is purely compression member or tension member, which is acting as a compression member under dead load, live load combination, it will act as a tension member under dead load, live load, wind load combination or dead load, wind load combination. In this condition, as far IS 800-2015, effective slenderness ratio should not be greater than 180. Now I'm switching over to Excel to determine the section of the truss. This is our forces in various members as I described earlier. This is the combination forces. Here 101 represents the dead load plus live load load case. And 102 dead load, live load, wind load. 103 dead load and wind load. I'm just copying 101 for M1 or M8 member. Copy. Paste spatial 
value. Okay. One second, 102. Copy, paste, special value. One second, and copy, paste, special value. Similarly, we can do the same thing for others member. This is the half portion of the truss, M1, M2, M3, M4. Now, as this is here, we can change the section, section of the truss. Here, we are going to design the top cord. M1, M2, M3, M4 are the member of top cord. Now, as per code, effective length coefficient k is 0.65. We have 0.65. And increment in allowable strain other than 101 load case is 33.333 percent. Allowable bending stress Point six, point six six FY. Allowable tensile stress, point four FY. Allowable shear stress, point four FY. This is ratio of increment in allowable stresses other than one zero one. Now, from the chart. This section 38, 38, 2.6, not satisfying the design. So we have to change. Now we are going to change this section. Next member is 40, 40.3.6. This is also not satisfying the all the members. So once again we have to change. 45, 45, 3.2. This is also not satisfying. Forty-nine, forty-nine, 2.9. Yes. Now all the member is satisfying. With the change of the section, we'll find different area, width, depth, thickness, IXX, IYY, radius of gyration will change. And here the member length, 17.89. So total weight, 72.81. Now main thing is how we are operating this system. Firstly, allowable compressions, we have to know the allowable compressive stress minimum for this. We have to calculate the minimum allowable compressive stress. To do that, we have to know the formula. As per code, the minimum compressive stress is 0.6 Fy. An allowable compressive stress, 0.6 Fy into Fcc by Fcc to the power, whole to the power n plus Fy whole to the power n whole to this and this is whole to the power 1 by n. Sigma AC permissible stress. This is sigma AC is permissible stress in axial compression. Fy yield stress of the steel here. It is three, 310 Newton per millimeter square. FCC, crit, elastic critical stress, pi square E by lambda square, where lambda is L by R. L, small L is effective length, that is 0.65 into original center to center distance. N is a factor assumed as 1.4.
this is the code for effective length. And oh, uh, 3.9.2.1, wind and earthquake load, structural steel and steel casting, when the effect of wind or earthquake load is taken into account, the permissible stresses specified may be exceeded by 33.13%, as I told you earlier. Now, FCC, first derived FCC. FCC, minimum elastic critical stress, FCC. Actually, we have two direction X and Y. So, here if you find IXX, IYS, since it is square rectangular hollow section, these two values are same. Similarly, RXX and RYY will be different if it is uh, rectangular uh, hollow section, RHS. So, the minimum value of RXX and RY we have to consider. This is a summary of the design. Now, if we use 3 mm thick weld, the strength of the weld will be 210, 0.7 weld thick, welding thickness into this welding strength per millimeter square. This is member one, member two, member three, member four. And if any joint requires you, the maximum compressive force, the maximum tensile force is like that. And by dividing the force with trace, you get the length. Here, maximum length is 230 two, millimeter. So, welding length, maximum welding length 230, similarly 236. 242 and 248. By the same manner, we can design the bottom cut of that truss. And section is 45, 45, 2.9. And utilization ratio is 0.9 maximum. It's very good. And winding length for member 9, 249 millimeter for M10 213 millimeter for M11 142 one thing during design M11 actual length of M11 is 6 meter but we are going to add one hanger member at the middle from the apex of the truss so the length Actual length will be 3 meter and effective length 1.95 meter. Otherwise, if we put here 6, it will show fake statement that is design is not supporting. So we have to put here 3. Same manner, we can design the start member. That is M14, M15, and M16. Here, M15, length of the M15 is 2.236. And load is also double here. And selecting this member is not satisfying the design. So, we are going to change it. The section 32, 32, point 32 32 and 2.6 satisfies all these three members and similar manner the maximum welding length for m9 36 32 and 36 this is our design of ceiling num number zero one member 21, 20 and 21 belongs to this category. Length of this member are 2.5 meter. 
look one thing here interesting here utilization ratio is very low design is okay but slenderness ratio is greater than 180 so we have to change this section Thirty two, thirty two, and two point six section satisfies all the criteria. And this is welding length forty one, forty one millimeter. This is the design of truss member ceiling two M twenty four and M twenty five belongs to this group. Length of the member two point five, two point five. Section 25, 2.6 does not satisfy the design. So we have to change. We are providing 40, 43.2. So the design is satisfactory. Thank you for watching this video. I'm waiting for your likes here and comments. If you think this presentation is useful to you, please contribute. Your contribution will inspire me and it will help me to decorate my future presentation with colorful manner. Thank you.